regarding public notice of meeting. Notice of the time and place of this meeting was publicized by notifying the area news media, by pu publicizing the same in the Omaha World Herald and outlets, by displaying such notice on the arcade level of Energy Plaza since September 13, 2013, and by mailing such notice to each of the district's directors on that same date. A copy of the proposed agenda for this meeting has been maintained on a current basis and is readily available for public inspection in the office of the district's corporate secretary. Additionally, a copy of the open meetings law is available for inspection in the public meeting book located in this meeting room. Item number three, review of the July 2013 comprehensive financial and operating reports and approval of the minutes for the last meeting. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Barrett. Yes. Kavanaugh. Yes. Gay. Yes. Green. Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Weber? Yes. <coughs> item number four. Persons wishing to address the Board of Directors on a particular item are asked to approach the microphone as that agenda item is discussed. <coughs> Comments will be heard following Board discussion of the item and prior to a vote by the Board. Persons, <coughs> persons wishing to address the Board on all other matters will have an opportunity before the close of the meeting. Item number five. Resolution number 5970. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District as follows. That the stakeholder process that is outlined on Exhibit A attached here to is hereby approved. And two, that management is hereby authorized to revise the stakeholder process as necessary and to report such revisions to the Board of Directors. I need a motion. Second. Second. Uh, this has been an ongoing process, uh, the stakeholder process. It's uh, basically what it does, it, it gathers information from uh, all the interested parties, from the industry, from the people who are affected, uh, and uh, it, it is a model for greater public input. And I ask that this resolution be approved. Well, very good. Any uh, comments from board members? I was going to ask Ms. Olson whether she had any further information for us on this particular thing, since this has kind of been her project. I appreciate that. Um, actually, the, the team has been getting together and talking about pilot projects that we can run through this, uh, this process and get back to senior management as well as the board with some output there before we fully implement it uh, going forward in 2014. Thank you. Lisa, you and your people have done a great job with this. Thank you. It's, it's taken a, the whole entire company to do it. So. Any other comments or questions from board members? Any from the public? Laverne Train, 4728 Cass, Omaha, District 2. Anyway, um, uh, thank you. I just want to thank you for this. The, I think the stakeholder process is a really good way for the utility to move forward. This is the only stakeholder process that we can engage in as the board. We only got three minutes, you know. So it's kind of cumbersome to come up with lots of ideas and stuff. So I just want to applaud you for that. And thank you very much. You're welcome. Anybody else? Uh, Laverne, did you get that on film? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be watching for it. Well, we have, we have after the meeting, too. <laughs> uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Weber? Yes. Motion carried. <coughs> Item number six, resolution number 5971. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District 
that the proposal of Hyundai Heavy Industries and Hyundai Corporation USA in the amount of $1,934,000 for the purchase of two 161 13.8 13.8 KB 30, 40, 50, 56 MBA transformers is the lowest and best bid received on request for proposal number 4072 and is hereby accepted. So moved. Second. Second. Dr. Weber, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, as you've uh, just heard, the purpose of this item is to purchase two 161 13 8 uh, MVA power transformers. Uh, these transformers are being purchased to serve as spares. The first will replace a previous single spare that recently was used to replace a failed transformer. And the second will ensure system reliability support for our aging fleet of 40 similar transformers, nine of which are older than 40 years. Seven proposals were received. Three are technically responsive and five are legally responsive. The engineer's estimate for the total contract is $1,900,000. So this action asks us to authorize the award of a contract to Hyundai <coughs> Heavy Industries and Hyundai Corporation USA in the amount of $1,934,000 for the purchase of two 161-13-8 KV power transformers. Okay. These things tend to fail when the busiest times. My combine never breaks down in the shed in the summer, I notice. So it's good that this program having a spare has worked out really well for us to keep our reliability going. Does anybody else on the board have a comment or question? Seeing none, how about the public? Seeing no one approaching, <coughs> Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Eric? Yes. Okay. Yes. Green? Yes. 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 Ulrich? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Motion carried. Item number seven. Resolution number 5972. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District that the amendment to the district's charter attached hereto as Exhibit A is hereby approved and the, gen and the district's general counsel and management <coughs> are hereby authorized and directed to present the Charter Amendment to the Nebraska Power Review Board for review and approval. Good morning. Good morning. We are in the next phase of the implementation of LB 646. Today's resolution takes the map, which has been slightly tweaked uh, since last month, to balance some lines out and some precincts out. Uh, to go forward by a ward and precinct statement as to what uh, those maps that have been placed actually do. The legal part is, is it has to be by uh, ward and precinct and not just lines drawn on, on a uh, Google map and placed on a website. So today we do that. This is only part of it. Uh, the legislature asks us to create, not have the uh, north, south, metro, and suburban districts, especially with the metro with five directors representing the city of Omaha at large, into eight districts. When we broke into eight districts, when as the work was done to break it into eight districts, we were able to take some places parts of Omaha uh, that were in SIDs and not in the city, which weren't part of the Metropolitan District, and level those lines out. So if your SID across the street from the city wasn't in, you had a you, your representative was, was in the North Subdivision rather than one of the Metropolitan ones. So now it's, it'll be broken into districts uh, similar to the county board, similar to the school districts, <coughs> school districts since there's more than one, and uh, uh, similar to the municipalities. The district's general council has uh, approved this and because this requires not only change in meets and bounds, it requires a change in our charter. So the charter amendments are included as part of this resolution so that uh, those items in which 
person represents which district and when that district's election would be in which cycle uh, is all set out. The next step after approval today, if it is approved, would be to go to the Power Review Board where it has to be approved by them and then submit it to the county <laughs> clerks or election commissioners depending on which county in our 14 county area would be applicable to this and should be ready uh, sometime this year so that uh, the map is out there if uh, if someone is interested in looking at it uh, the process is going forward uh, what we are doing lives up to our commitment to the legislature and is probably an appropriate way for this district to move forward uh, unless anyone has any questions i would recommend at this time that uh, the board adopt this amendment to the district's charter to change the elections to approve the language which would go to the Power Review Board for their permission and their approval. Very good. Any comments from board members? I, uh, I want to thank Director Green and our legal staff for their um, hard work they did in, in, in creating fair <coughs> districts. I know there's quite a bit of work involved in doing this, and I think looking at the uh, shapes and so forth and, and, and the geographical layout of the districts, it seems to be fair and, and, and reasonable. That being said, I again want to voice my displeasure with the legislature for passing this law. Um, going this route will only lead to parochialism and less effective government. Right now, up until this point, the folks in the Omaha metro area had five representatives, five members of this board representing them, who were directly accountable to those rate payers and those <coughs> citizens. Now you'll have one. I just, I'm a firm believer in that something's not broke. Don't fix it. Well, that's what the, the legislature is doing right here. So it's their baby. We have to follow the, uh, the law, to follow what they say. Um, I was tempted to vote no as a protest on this, but that wouldn't make any sense. We have to uh, come up with these districts. We've done a good job of, of, uh, of being fair in how we've done this, and we'll move forward. Thank you. Thank you. I know many people share your sentiments. Um, I also would like to congratulate the committee. Uh, uh, for uh, laying this out the way it had done through deliberate uh, discussions. I think it uh, meets all the ramifications of being uh, easy to interpret, good for the different counties in, in my district anyway, uh, that people have a clear idea who their representative is. And that didn't come by without a lot of hard work doing it. And I'd also like to reinforce the fact that we have a letter from council that says this does meet the legal requirements of the legislature. So that's all good and well. Anybody else? Yeah, just briefly, I would like to thank MAPA for their assistance in doing this work with us. And also Mr. Bruckner and his staff on the amount of work which they did, which was uh, substantial. And uh, also making himself available to each of the directors on an individual basis to come and review things and to be uh, uh, comfortable, if not completely satisfied, with the results. Mr. Chairman, I yes. do have a question on the process of, so I, there has been some great work put into it, and so I won't go into that, but I appreciate that. Uh, to go to the Power Review Board, how often do they meet, and then it will go to the Power Review Board, they would support or not support it, I assume they'd support it, mm -hmm. um, then it goes to the election commissioners, people can file for these offices in December, I think, is when you can officially file it. Right. Are you talking in the next month? The Power Review Board will get it. Do yeah, but Parker, uh, yeah, I know there was some discussion about it. Yeah. Notice the publication, but do, have we got that at all yet? <laughs> yeah, so the, the Power Review, we should be able to file the petition uh, for approval of the Charter Amendment pretty quickly, within the next week or two, once it's approved by uh, management and the Government Governance Committee. That's, that's uh, fairly straightforward. Once it's filed, then uh, the Power Review Board will notice uh, the proposed charter amendment um, in uh, two publications for three consecutive weeks. So there's at least that much time it has to go to go by. The Power Review Board does meet monthly, so uh, as I said at the uh, uh, committee <coughs> meetings, it's uncertain whether we'll be able to get that up in, uh, in October. It may be November, but one of those two months, I'm confident we will um, be able to get it uh, completed before the Power Review Board. And certainly ahead of the December. Yes. Uh, well, one reason I asked the election commissioner asked me that 
in Sarpy County. Okay. Of, and MAPA does a great job. <coughs> So as long as they're communicating, because you're talking about a lot of different election commissioners that now have okay. to put it on their website, and okay. citizens can look and see what district am I in and all that stuff. So he's just asking about when they're going to receive it, but it sounds like they'd have enough time. I would check by the end of the year for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think he said if I can get a month before those deadlines, I'd be helpful. Okay, that's what we'll do. So that's our yeah. I've worked with them, so yeah, they're great to work with. Very good. Brock, everybody, if I could, uh, we've not talked about redistricting, and and I'm curious about a little more than six years away. Uh, what is what's our process for that? Is have we sure. have standards? Sure, and it's every ten years right. after the federal census is completed, district and and other political subdivisions mm -hmm. have to redistrict to rebalance population numbers. Um, it usually occurs within a year to year and a half. After the census is completed somewhere in there, you have to wait for all the numbers to be distributed down to the local bodies, to the election commissioners and county clerks. Uh, we, we completed that process most recently, I think toward the end of 2011, it might have been early 2012. We'll follow the same process after the, tw the uh, 2020 uh, uh, census. And, and typically, uh, the adjustments are not that large. Um, it may be different now that uh, the district has, or will have, probably uh, eight subdivisions as opposed to four. So there may be more uh, tweaking of the boundaries than, uh, than we've been used to in the past. Time will tell. Okay. So, thank you. All right. That was one of the reasons we tried to get it right this time. Was, uh, as the census goes forward, uh, that those things will move around. And it never was a problem in the past in terms of the city because uh, uh, if the city annexed, then those became part of the metropolitan, and then it was just balancing out along the borders. But now we're going to have to do a lot of internal work. Right. Yeah. Any other comments or questions from the board? Seeing none, any from the public? I don't mind <laughs> I had trepidation like, like Mr. Kavanaugh was talking about. Um, I've run for the board a couple of times, as you guys know. It's really hard for somebody like me with no money to launch a citywide campaign. Now with the District 2, that's almost a doable district. I mean, I can actually afford to do just my District 2 now. So, you know, in a way, I'm like, you know, you're kind of right. But on the other token, you, you either had to have a political name, an ex-governor, you know, mayors, and, you know, or millionaires like Mr. Dodge to be able to launch a citywide campaign. So I think this does provide regular people access to this board versus just the political elite, essentially. So I just want to say that. I'm not sure your comments. Mr. Parliament? Yeah, I was kind of... <laughs> no. In the Islamic community, he's very elite. <laughs> I'm not a millionaire. Just because we're from the city, don't want to make him that he's not elite. <laughs> uh, anybody else? <laughs> Seeing none, please call the roll. Barrett? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Weber? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. <clears throat> Item number eight, resolution number 5973. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District that the compensation adjustment for Vice President and Chief Financial Officer Edward E. Easterlin, as set forth on the exhibit attached hereto, be and hereby is approved. So moved. Second. Director Green. On Tuesday at our committee meeting, we reviewed the performance of Sherry Vice President, and uh, would board would recommend. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> hold on a second here. The staff forgot to change the resolution. Let me change this right here. Leave it on the Just on the top. That's not who it is. That's why I was reading. Okay. <laughs> Down here is the real name. That's who presented it, yeah. Sure. 
Well, you, you want to raise? She'll <laughs> <laughs> take one. Do you want to give her yours? <laughs> It's the uh, Vice President of Finance, Easterland, um, and we reviewed his performance. We did review his performance with the news agency. Um, and uh, it has been exceptional. And it's a 3% raise is well deserved. It keeps him keeps moving his midpoint along, but he's still low on the midpoint. And in, uh, how long have you been here? Four years now? Yeah, five years of January. I'm glad it's like Just think of all the bad things you missed out have. there. We saved you from a lot of natural disasters. <laughs> He's been a terrific addition to the senior staff. And I, I not just from the board point of view and uh, his, his contemporaries uh, in senior management, but the, the, what I hear from his employees is the same that they are very happy to have him as their boss and have enjoyed every minute of it, except when he's unhappy, but, but that's part of the business. And he's deserving more than the 3% change at this time, but he will, we will offer that and he will hopefully accept it. So at this time, I move that uh, the compensation adjustment for Mr. Easterlin uh, be made at this time. And it would be effective October 1st. Okay. okay. I wanna, um so to add that Mr. Easterlin has not had an easy job the past few years, trying to uh, cope with all of the uh, struggles and tr and everything. And uh, many times, uh, as there's been a recipient of uh, kill the messenger phenomenon, when he says, we've got to cut some more money, and uh, for example, cutting $11 million off the budget this year. And that's just one of the few things that he's had to, uh, you know, and, and, uh, but he's done a great job, I think, managing this situation, and uh, it's well deserved. Thank you, Fred, as the treasurer, obviously our committee works closely with Edward and his staff. And they're very helpful, very competent. They do a good job, and we're very happy with their performance. So, so I don't want to make this a love fest, but I'll second what everybody else said. We've <laughs> had some choppy waters, and you've taken us through it very well. The entire staff. Yes. Yes. I no, 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 no. concur. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Anybody from the public? Seeing none, let's go ahead and vote. See how it goes. Barrett. Yes. Gay. Yes. Green. Yes. McGuire. Yes. Mines. Yes. Ulrich. Yes. Weather. <clears throat> Cavanaugh. Yes. Yeah. Motion carried. Let's <clears throat> on our. Uh, Agenda is the state of the utility report. President Gates, would you please engage us with that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, <clears throat> I would uh, appreciate your comments on uh, CFO Easterman as well. I obviously will hardly agree with that as my performance evaluation indicated. Uh, walking through the utility as we normally do in, uh, from production operations, uh, we, we focus on safety, obviously. It's important for the people. It's been 132 days since we've had a, even a reportable accident at North Omaha Station. Nebraska City worked through the months of July and August with no injuries. Last station accident there that was reportable was June 26th. Uh, it's significant because in the summer uh, there's a lot of uh, conditions which could warrant uh, those kind of things happening, and they did not. So it was very good performance. Operationally, Nebraska City Units 1 and 2 operated at a high level, as did North Omaha, uh, throughout the summer, and as well as our peaking units at Jones Street, Cass County, which were needed this summer. Uh, Particularly in the end of July and beginning of August, or the end of August, beginning of September, our renewable energy continued to operate well for us. 4.2% uh, of OPD's retail energy sales in August, and uh, capacity factor was 34%. <clears throat> that's a little less than previous months, but it's important to note that that's a percent of our energy sales. So it goes up in August. Those go down a little bit, but it's still a major part of our portfolio. And, and the only place we right now have growth in generation is additional wind. Uh, and our new wind farms coming along well, as you heard uh, last month. We had a retirement in the fuels division. Uh, Ron Boro uh, retired, which some of you may know. I mentioned this not because of Ron's retirement, but in the way that uh, we have chosen to handle that. We are not replacing that division leader and have folded that division into uh, Jeff Karloff's division. So he'll handle fuel as well as uh, the engineering pieces because it's important that we continue to flatten the organization going forward and, and be more efficient in what we're doing. 
Fort Calhoun Station continues to make physical progress toward restart. Uh, since the last meeting, the reactor vessel head has been installed. All the control rods are coupled, uh, both mechanically and electrically, and have been uh, checked out for operation. We're at the point now where we'll be moving this weekend or early next week to fill the uh, reactor coolant system and start to operate our reactor coolant pumps in preparation for the heat up of the unit. Uh, there's a myriad of work that has uh, gone on to place us at this point. Uh, we did. We were going to have an emergency preparedness <coughs> exercise uh, earlier in August, but that day happened to be a very high wind day and weather in Nebraska, so we're going to conduct that on December 3rd. We've had a number of inspectors at the plant, including our new Region 4 administrator, whose name is Mark Depa. Uh, he is uh, replacing the current regional administrator. He was up there for two days. I got a chance to tour and uh, interface with the staff as well as his staff up there. And he will be in the region officially uh, toward the uh, end of October. He'll be taking over that job completely. Um, we do have a large presence of inspectors, as I indicated. There was a public meeting held in Region 4 on August 27th to discuss our plan for going forward with the uh, reactor and the facility. And there is a public meeting, <clears throat> as I'm sure you all noticed, on September 24th. At 6 o'clock, that will be at the Comfort Inn, which is uh, 72nd and Rover, essentially. <clears throat> so Fort Calhoun continues to progress toward, uh, toward startup. In the transmission and distribution, uh, we had a real privilege to have the uh, head of the Midwest Reliability Organization visit here at OPPD and the senior management team, as well as many of the people that work with them. His name is Dan Scar, and he is uh, head of all the the MRO right now, which runs our reliability organization, so we had a great chance to interaction and have discussions with him. We've also placed a new safety device in service, and uh, it's a fall restraint device that went into service September 9th, and that's for all of our TMD personnel to climb. Uh, and we, that's a tough job. That's a very tough job, and this provides additional insurance that we aren't going to have somebody come off a pole uh, inadvertently. We did get an insurance settlement at North Omaha uh, with FM Global and that was with regard to the generator which we had to repair and uh, with that settlement uh, both the receivable of 170000 and we agreed to settle the whole claim for a $1.17 million. With regard to our customers, um, we did host the NAACP and an executive committee at North Omaha Station on Saturday, September 14th, the last Saturday, for a tour and a discussion about that uh, station. And we did host three community leader tours of North Omaha and other facilities we have. You uh, probably heard uh, the announcement on Project Oasis. Uh, obviously, many OPP employees, as well as our prices, were involved in the successful attraction of that company to Omaha. And we have a new manager of economic development, Tim O'Brien. Some of you have met him. He's replacing Roger Christensen, which you probably all met. Uh, it's big shoes to fill, but Tim is uh, Tim's the guy to do it. And we, in, in the area of participation, we had over 50 OPP employees that are involved in community mentoring. Uh, with the Midlands Mentoring Partnership, and that uh, we're recruiting more uh, to put in that. And continuing on just with the last people item, our, our Women's Employee Resource Group uh, network has recently revised its infrastructure and, and, and uh, bylaws so that we can broaden that, and we really encourage participation in that uh, because we have some great opportunities and we want to make sure we continue that growth uh, within our company. That concludes uh, my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, President Gates. Time of the meeting for opportunity for the public to comment on other items of district business. <laughs> Is there anyone here who would like to comment? David Corbin, 1002 North for United Street. First, I'd like to thank the uh, uh, OPPD, uh, Sherry Hutcherson, Lisa Olson, Dean Mueller, and others for engaging in uh, what I think are very productive and and positive uh, discussions about uh, renewable energy and it's it's been enlightening to, to work with that group. I appreciate that. I also want to uh, congratulate on the, you know, actually uh, I read a utilities uh, document. That's what I do in my spare time. <laughs> and in there they talk about the uh, OPPD's uh, 1,441 uh, vehicles and how you're dealing with that to save energy and the idling of those vehicles. So I also uh, would like to commend you on that. 
Uh, just to make my uh, time up here shorter, I'm going to uh, pass out a handout to each. The, the, I apologize for the quality of the, the printer, but my printer is having a little problems. One is an uh, editorial I had in the uh, Omaha Star, and on the back is uh, an article from the Wall Street Journal uh, talking about O-Power and how O-Power billing system has saved energy across the country. You, some of you may recall uh, we had them come and talk to you, and I hope you, you will reconsider uh, at least piloting the O-Power project, so I will pass that out. And then, uh, finally, I, I would just uh, like to, uh, a, a study that just uh, was in the news yesterday, the, the uh, headline is, Renewable Energy Now the Cheapest Option for Americans. And this is when you factor in the social, the health, and the environmental costs. I'm sure most of you have seen the newspaper front page today about the North Omaha coal plant. And uh, I would just uh, like to say that um, those of us who are in public health who were involved in the, uh, the legislation and the master set uh, settlement for tobacco issues ran up against the same thing. Tobacco doesn't cause health problems, so on. We don't have all the evidence of a bunch of other things. The ironic part is, during that discussion, they were blaming you. Now, we're on the other side, and it's blaming other external factors. But it is a factor, and I appreciate that at least there's a date, a uh, potential date listed in that article today, and I commend you for that. Thank you. Thank you. John Pollock, 1412 North 35th Street, Omaha. Uh, I would like to uh, second what uh, David Corbin just said about uh, O-Power and the uh, article that's been distributed to you. Uh, the uh, weather outlook, obviously we've gotten past our, uh, our unusually late summer heat bump. Uh, Today we've got a strong cold front that's going to be moving through the area. It looks like uh, it'll hit Omaha early enough that we're in no particular danger of uh, uh, strong thunderstorms. However, in the south part of the district, it might have time to uh, heat up enough to uh, create a, a few problems. Uh, overall, we're going to continue uh, uh, actually a more active weather pattern above normal temperatures overall but we have a pretty strong storm track to the north of us, and that means that it's going to drag through a succession of uh, stronger cold fronts and uh, uh, stronger temperature changes uh, from one period to the next as we go through. Uh, we have uh, an unusually north-south amplified weather pattern in the eastern Pacific. We're kind of downstream of that where things are attenuating a little bit, but it's still a... Uh, Oh, a, f a fairly strong weather pattern for this time of the year, often uh, mid-September to mid-October are the most settled times of the year. That may not be the case this year. Thank you. John, I'm going to call you out. Is it going to rain today, yes or no? Uh, <laughs> already has. Already has. <laughs> will, will rain some more. By what time? Well, we've got uh, scattered showers now, better chance this afternoon just behind the cold front. How far south is it more likely? To <laughs> uh, I'm going to say uh, more likely to see stronger stuff down near Nebraska City, where that uh, cold front won't be until later this afternoon. I, I, have, a, south of I have another question, more about climate. Um, what, what is your take on the flooding and, and, and the rain in Colorado? Uh, my take on that, first of all, by the time that water gets down the plat to us, it's uh, not going to flood. Uh, but my overall take is that we've had uh, in a, a uh, what they call the southwest monsoon, which is when the uh, subtropical moisture, uh, in a, on a regular basis, it makes it into the southwest U.S. around this time of year. However, this time it made it all the way up uh, past New Mexico into Colorado and sat there. We did have a stagnant weather pattern for a while 
and that allowed this uh, basically tropical moisture which had made it over the Rockies to sit there and dump. That's a fairly unusual occurrence. Uh, and in fact when I look back at the other flood records they had all been in May and June which suggests that it was a combination in those cases of uh, uh, runoff from the mountains and uh, the kind of normal spring rains that we get. Uh, this one is pretty unusual but uh, overall we've been seeing more of these incursions of uh, tropical moisture uh, into the interior than we used to. The uh, 2011 flood was another example of that and I would kind of expect that kind of thing to uh, continue to increase although it's still a rare event. Thank you. Thank you. So here comes the bad news. So um, something that hasn't been mentioned since it happened, I noticed it was not at the executive meetings or in the press. You guys have got a really good press person, obviously. Uh, Moody's Investor Service has downgraded OPP Power District's uh, senior lien from AA2 from AA1 and supported lien rating to AA3 from AA2, affecting approximately $1.5 billion of senior lien and $374 million of subordinate lien debt outstanding. The downgrade of the long-term ratings reflect OPPD's continuing challenges <clears throat> to operate a single-unit nuclear power plant, which is what we have been suggesting for the last two years. And, uh, and of course, it's extended hours for almost 2.5 years, indicating a higher business risk profile compared to other similarly rated power utilities. The rating could face downward pressure if the utility does not effectively manage its generation fleet as Fort Calhoun Station comes back online. Environmental upgrades at existing coal, older coal facilities are completed. And, of course, what we've been advocating since 1992, new renewable energy sources are integrated into the supply profile. So the solution to your pollution, of course, is renewable. It always has been. <sighs> now, what I find interesting is I had to apologize a couple meetings ago for something I said. Now, what I would like to know is when are this organization going to apologize for the downgrading of our debt? for having six inch uh, bolts in the ground instead of nine inch, for having rusty ball bearings which were supposed to be stainless steel but were not. Did we pay for stainless steel? Did we pay for nine inch bolts? I'm just wondering when is the management and this organization going to apologize to us for the downgrade of the debt and for the mishandling of the nuclear power plant for two and a half years. And it wasn't until the NRC stepped in that we found out all these other things were going wrong at the nuclear power plant. And this is under your management. So anyway, um, I just wanted to know, and of course the misinformation that happened when there was water in the buildings and everybody here said there wasn't. When is an apology for that going to happen? You know, I have that video on, on YouTube. It's there. You guys now have it on your um, minutes because I gave it to you last time. And I'm just wondering, you know, when does this organization just buck up and say, hey, we're sorry for the mismanagement and for these downgrades. That's okay. There is none. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to comment? Seeing no one, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Oh, wait. Sure. This is not official business. But, uh, the other day I went out to the uh, dedication of the Glacier Preserve that UNO is preserving the prairie grass. And they had some entertainment out there that was outstanding. And I'd forgotten how uh, good uh, David Corbin really is as a performer. <laughs> he played the uh, harmonica, the guitar, and he sang. Not all of those at once. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them he did at one time. Uh, and uh, I'm serious about these. He, I'd forgotten how good he was. Uh, so I'm just saying that if OPPD ever needs to have some entertainment for one of its uh, parties, whenever you have one, uh, you might consider David Corbin. <laughs> a man of many talents. He is a man of many talents. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming. This means adjourned. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, that's
No apologies. Yes, next time we said, oh, could you just have that? Yeah. Oh, I understand. Now we have to do I understand. I well, they banned me back here. I used to be on the side. I understand that. I mean, if we could just turn the tripod just and not stick it out there. I don't know if there's a way to do that. You know, I'm just going to keep the trip and all the